Hey guys, we've had far too many modern systems on the channel as of late. I figured it was high time we did something truly retro with a 286. So I pulled out this old computer. It's a 12 MHz 286 with 1 MB of memory and a 32 MB hard drive. Or to be more accurate, a 32 MB compact flash card. Let's turn it into a serial terminal and connect it to a modern system using a null modem cable. And toward the end of the video, we'll look at the configuration under Slackware Linux, and we'll talk about why you might actually want to do this at home. But first things first, let's pop into BIOS and take a quick look around. We've got a 1.44 meg, 3.5 floppy drive, a 1.2 meg, 5.25, and as I mentioned earlier, a 32 meg compact flash as our boot device. Now I'm going to set the primary display to VGA. And we'll turn on shadowing for the system BIOS and the VGA BIOS. That should speed things up a little bit. So we'll save that information. And let's boot from the DOS installation disk. Now this hard drive already has a partition on it. I'd like to start with a clean slate. So let's go into fdisk and we'll delete the partition. Just break out of the setup here and pop into fdisk. Now fdisk shows we currently have a partition on the drive. Let's delete that and then we'll create a new one. And of course we need to reboot. Once again, booting from the setup disk. Now DOS 622 setup is trying to tell me that we currently have an install of DOS on the drive. Now since we just deleted the partition, eh, somehow I doubt that. So either way, let's format the drive and just buzz through this install of DOS. Okay, there we go. Installation is complete. And we'll reboot from our fresh install of DOS. Good, so we're up and running. Now there's a few options for terminal software. Procom was pretty common back in the day, as was QModem. I opted for Telex. I have a copy of Telex 3.5.1. Let's execute the installer. We'll put it in the default directory. And the installation took a surprisingly long time. Now, this software is 30 years old, so of course it's been cracked by now. Let's drop in our registration information. Now, I'm not going to be using a modem. We're going to use a serial null modem cable, so it really doesn't matter what we pick here. But I am going to go with a 9600 BPS modem. We will indeed be using COM1. And the installation of Telex is complete. So let's launch the software. Go through a couple of really quick configuration options. And here we are. Now you notice down at the bottom, it defaulted to a 38,400 baud connection with 8N1. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But I'm going to go with a more traditional setup of 9600 baud. So let's go into the configuration options. If I hit Alt, it activates the menu. And we'll move over to configuration and COM parameters. And we'll press E to select 9600. 8N1. 
Now, essentially what that means, we're going to be transmitting 9,600 bits per second. We're sending eight bits at a time, beginning with a start bit and ending with a stop bit. And we're not going to be using parity. It's a pretty standard setting across the industry. A lot of old Cisco routers and Sun equipment use that setting. If you want to go with a higher speed, that's up to you, of course. You may run into some transmission issues, though. Now, the software assumes that we're going to be using a modem, so it actually sends a modem initialization string. Since we're connecting these two computers directly with a null modem cable, let's remove that init string for the modem, just so it doesn't print any gibberish on the screen. And last, we'll save those settings and back out of Telex. Now, of course, this is all installed on the hard drive in the system, but we really don't need a hard drive to do this. So I'm going to take a copy of Telex, we'll strip it down, remove whatever we can to make it fit on a floppy, then we'll disable the hard drive in the system and run this entirely from floppy. So I'm formatting a disk with the slash s option to make it bootable. And then we'll put a stripped down copy of Telex on that floppy. Just in case, I'm actually going to copy a couple of DOS utilities on there as well. We'll want a copy of Edit. And Edit requires QBasic. So let's put those on that floppy disk. Now if I reboot, go into BIOS, we can turn off that hard drive. I could remove it, of course, but for now it'll suffice simply to turn it off. This is also an excellent opportunity to connect our serial null modem cable. I'm using a stripped-down, three-wire version of the cable. It's going to go from COM1 on the 286 to COM1 on my E8400 server. I'll put the pinout on the screen in case anyone should need it. So we're booting from that three and a half floppy. Now I really should have updated the auto exec bat so the telex runs on boot. Let's take care of that now. And while we're at it, I'm also going to check the telex configuration file. Let's make sure it's actually set to 9600 baud. And here it is here. It looks like it defaulted to 38,400. You'll notice it truncates the last character in the baud rate. Don't know why it does that. But let's put in 960 and save that file. So when we launch into Telex, you see at the bottom it shows the correct 9600 N81, and full duplex. So I'm going to fire up the Linux server, and in a moment or two, we should see some output on the screen. Now, just a point of note, if you did have the incorrect baud rate set, you'd see something on the screen, but it would print gibberish. So if you're playing along at home, and that's what you're seeing, well, check your baud rate, chances are you've got a mismatch. Let's log in as Scott. And we'll take a look at the configuration under Linux. Now there's really only one file that you need to modify to get the serial connection working. That's going to be under Etsy. Let's take a look at the Etsy in the tab. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, we have a list of the virtual terminals on the system. If you've ever used a Linux system before, chances are you've used Control alt f1 f2, etc. to switch between terminals on the system. Well, what we're looking for is something very similar. You see it here under Local Serial Lines. There's a line there that starts with S1. It's normally commented out 
We just need to uncomment that and either reboot or issue an init queue. And that will start a serial terminal using 9600 BPS on COM1 or TTYS0 as Linux understands it. Now that's the bare minimum we need to do to get that serial terminal active. But there's a couple of other things that you can do in addition that will be very helpful. By default, at least in Slackware, the root user is not able to log in directly on that serial port. You would have to log in as a non-root user and then switch users to root. Let's go into the Etsy secure TTY file and we'll enable that option for root. So this file contains all the places that root can log directly into. And once again, by default, the TTYS0 is normally commented out. I've already uncommented that, of course. So if needs be, I can log in directly as root on the serial console. So there's one last modification I would recommend. If you're running a headless server and something goes wrong on boot, it may come up in single user mode. Now that's okay. The serial console will give you access to single user, but there's a lot of information has already flowed by by the time you reach that point. So let's make a modification to our bootloader configuration so everything the kernel prints is sent directly to that serial terminal. By default, Slackware still uses Lilo, the Linux loader. A lot of other Linux distributions will use the Grand Unified Bootloader, or GRUB. It's a very similar procedure. So let's take a look in the Etsy Lilo.conf. And the option we're looking for is way down at the bottom. I've added a line in here. Append equals console equals TTYS0 9600. So we need to save that etsy lilo.conf. And of course, anytime you modify the lilo.conf file, you need to rerun lilo for that to take effect. So if you have a headless server at home, and I suspect a lot of my audience probably does, whether it's a Linux system, FreeBSD, or an old Sun server, if you got a 286, or even an old XT clone kicking around. You can repurpose it as a serial console for easy access to that headless server. So if you enjoyed this one, please feel free to like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, and as always, thanks for watching.